Alan Brogan sent in McManaman and dodging. Yes, what's happening everyone? Welcome back to GEA Fan TV Dublin. I've just played out a 116 draw with Kerry. I mean, that was some game, that was something else. I mean it's it's really hard to uh, to explain how I feel after that game. I mean that was that was something else between Dublin and Kerry. Undoubtedly the game of the year, an unbelievable match. Um, from both teams in many ways, specifically Kerry. I mean, the way they put it up to Dublin in this game was something that I don't think anyone really expected. They matched Dublin in, in almost every way. Um, a lot of talking points, of course, to delve into in this game. The A lot of controversial decisions, specifically from the referee, James Goff. Um, and there were some, some key moments in this game to talk about. So definitely some ways I felt like Kerry could have won this game. And we could be talking about how Kerry have ended the five in a row bid. Uh, but of course, guys, first of all, if you are new around here, do hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the game. Um, and yeah, you know, specifically in those early stages when the game obviously, um, you know, started, Dublin certainly asserted their dominance very early on. And that was something that we haven't always seen from Dublin. Dublin have often actually been the, the slow starters in a lot of matches um, in the championship this year. And of course, even going back to last year and some previous, uh, you know, championship uh, campaigns, think of the all Ireland final last year. And even a lot of the championship games they've had this year against the likes of Cork, um, you know, and even Mayo, for example, when they were very slow starters. But certainly in this game, they started really well, um, and it was good to see that Dublin looked very much up for it, winning a lot of the uh, you know kickouts quite early on. Dean Rock was looking very bright, um, you know, the ball was being fed into Conor Callaghan, and Dublin looked very good in those early stages. But Kerry certainly did show um, a lot of promise. You know, in that first half as well, you know, the likes of Jack Barry, I thought was was very bright. Of course, he came in for Killian Spillan. We'll get onto him in a moment as well. But yeah, Jack Barry looked very bright. David Moran definitely had um, an unbelievable game. I mean, he's the one player I look at in this Kerry side who just physically is a lot better than I thought he was. I'm not gonna lie, he was he was shrugging off Dublin players at times when he'd win the ball, uh, when he would win kickouts. Um, it was you're not getting the ball back off off him. You know he, he catches it, he shrugs a few uh, a few of the Dublin midfield off, and then he offloads the ball to the likes of Sean O'Shea and David Clifford, let's say for example. But yeah, Kerry very much stayed uh, in contest with the game. We talked very much in the preview about how Kerry could overload a Dublin's midfield in the 45 to 60 meter line, and that was something they did, and they did see a lot of joy with it. They were able to turn over a lot of possessions. They were flustering some of they or some of uh, Stephen Cluxton's kickouts, and certainly Dublin in some ways were losing possession a lot more easier than they normally would have. But of course, something we also said, of course, was that very much the that you know system of, of putting three or four players um, and have them attack the ball and press the ball when kickouts were being hit out by either Shane Ryan or Stephen Cluxton meant that there was always the potential for a lot of space if Dublin won the kick-out. And that was obviously how the Dublin goal came about. Um, kick-out from um, the uh, Shane Ryan, I think it was Brian Menton who won the ball. It was offloaded eventually down the line uh, by Kieran Kilkenny. He picked out uh, Jack McCaffrey who unleashed a wonderful finish into the back of the net and Dublin were in fact um, you know in front at that point we were, we were looking very very bright everything was looking good from a Dublin perspective um, the only difference is normally when Dublin do start getting a goal and they do start to get in those positions they dominate they, they have that you know 10 to 15 minute spell where Dublin just absolutely you know dismantle the opposition and, and clear them out and, and very much wrap up the game there and then didn't happen in this game. Dublin didn't have a period like that. I thought Kerry were very smart at times um, in, in the way they'd respond to a lot of the great things Dublin done. Kerry at times would be um, you know, very calm in possession. Um, they also did uh, operate the short kick out quite a lot and were very patient on the ball. And they were very smart as well to counteract Dublin's press. Uh, which I thought was very impressive as well. Now, certainly before half time, you know, Dublin had a five point lead, and it was certainly looking like Dublin would, um, you know, very much control that dominance. Um, I suppose one thing we should talk about before. 
the uh, red card by Johnny Cooper. It was actually the penalty that Kerry had. Um, I mean, this was a very odd decision by James Goff. I mean, you know, when you are looking at how you know uh, this rule has been implemented and how it has been adapted and 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 kind of understood by referees, we've seen a lot of these penalties given in the past three to five weeks. In particular, in the championship this year, we've seen the Michael Murphy situation between Donegal and Mayo, where I think it was it Lee Keegan who brought down Michael Murphy. And that was given as a penalty. That was kind of questionable. This one for me again. I mean, it's another one of them where uh, you know Johnny Cooper has got a hold of of David Clifford. But for me, I mean, fair enough. If we're going by the way this rule should be implemented, then it should be a penalty. But all I'm saying is this happens a lot of the time. I mean, across in the box, we see this happen. You know, almost all the time. So does that mean we're just going to consistently keep giving penalties all the time? You know how exactly is it going to work in in those kind of regards is very interesting and and for me I found it very very soft. He had a little hold of him. Um, he didn't even he didn't even bring him down. I mean David Clifford was still very much standing and actually had peeled away from Johnny Cooper. The, like the ball didn't even go anywhere near him. So um, you know the ball went straight into the hands of, of Stephen Cluxton. So I thought that penalty decision was very strange. Great save by Cluxton of course. And looking back on this game. I mean, how big of a penalty save could that be for Cluxton? Um, and Cluxton at times is very good in this game. A lot of his kickouts, um, he was able to bypass a lot of the um, pressure from Kerry. And in particular, he's just so good at picking out the free man at times. Um, you know, his accuracy on kickouts is just absolutely unbelievable. Um, of course, though, just before half time, as we were just about to talk about, Johnny Cooper was sent off having pulled down David Clifford. Now, the first challenge, undoubtedly, definitely a yellow card. This one, in my opinion, I've had a look at it from a... I'd, I'd like to see it maybe from, from a different angle to the, one, to the one we've seen on the telly, just to see if he really did have a, you know, a, a, you know, a full grab on David Clifford's arm. If he did, and he did bring him down, then I think it was the right decision by the referee to give it a yellow. Um, there was some talk about it being persistent fouling and that kind of being involved, and that's kind of why he did give the yellow as opposed to... Um, you know, just giving a free. Um, they were saying in the Sunday game studio that um, it was a free the other way. I definitely don't agree with that. Um, I think Joe Broly was saying that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was one of them that I can understand the referee in that sense for giving the, the second yellow. But it, it was harsh. It was definitely harsh, uh, no doubt. I mean, as I said to you before, I would like to see another um, another angle of that free to really see if he did have a full grab at David Clifford's arm. And whether he did pull him down, um, and it was smart in some ways by David Clifford as well, allowing you know put, shielding his body in front of Johnny Cooper and allowing that to happen. Um, but yeah, it definitely did change the game. You know, Dublin, Dublin don't normally get indisciplined. They don't normally give away silly frees, and they don't normally get players sent off. At least not anymore. Anyway, um, you know, a lot of people feel like that's why Derek McConnelly got exiled very much from. The Dublin team was because at times he was letting the team down with city red cards and off the ball incidents and that kind of stuff. Um, and and yeah, you know, Dublin down to 14 men against the unbelievable attacking team in Kerry. This was always going to be extremely difficult for Dublin to, to live with Kerry. And in that second half, initially, Dublin done really well. Just dropped my phone, that's great. <laughs> Dublin done very well against Kerry, um, you know, to hold Kerry off initially. They were smart on possession. They were picking their opportunities, picking their chances. Um, but you did always feel like the space was there for Kerry. They, even in the first half of times, Kerry were getting in behind this Dublin defence. And um, and that was something I was speaking about in, in the preview a bit as well, is that although Dublin haven't conceded, um, I think they've only conceded one goal from play, and that was the, the game against Mayo, they do leave a lot of space in behind. There is space in behind that full-back line, and Kerry were exploiting that. And that was ultimately where the goal came from uh, ball was played uh, i think it was from tommy walsh into killian spillan um and spillan i mean just a wonderful finish stephen cluxton didn't see it um i think it went through uh, one of the dublin players as well just an unbelievable one of the dublin defenders unbelievable finish from killian spillan and from there kerry just had the momentum i'm not gonna lie guys as a dublin fan as you can see obviously um, I was massively worried. I really felt like Dublin 
were about to uh, to lose this drive for five and just lose the game. I mean, um, there was a lot of uh, like uncharacteristic things from Dublin in this game. We were having shots from kind of all angles. I felt like Paddy Small uh, once or twice just had shots from kind of from ridiculous angles that he wouldn't normally have. Um, you know, you had the Corma Costello point that wasn't given. Obviously, correct decision from Hawkeye in that sense. So, you know, that counts as a wide. You even had Darren McConnelly as well going for what looked like a very simple uh, simple shot. And he missed as well. And Kerry capitalized massively. Dublin were, were really struggling. And Kerry were, were, were starting to turn everything over. And it really looked like not just that Kerry could win this game, but they could go two or three points in front here. I mean, Kerry were driving at Dublin and Dublin almost looked tired in some ways. It was, uh, it was very strange to see because normally it's the other thing we're talking about. In the, in the, in the last 10 to 15 minutes, it, it's, it's Dublin that actually show the, um, the momentum and actually show the, the, you know, the conditioning strength to actually go and win the game. Um, Kerry, you know, they, they didn't miss any chances as well. I think their conversion rate in the second half, I don't know the exact figures, but I imagine it must have been really high. Um, the only miss I can think of is when David Clifford had that shot that um, that went into the hands of Stephen Cluxton. And all in all, Kerry's forwards were had an all-round great game. Stephen O'Brien, Sean O'Shea, of course, as well. I mean, his free kick taking ability was absolutely unbelievable. I don't think he missed a free in this game. Um, so that was just... Uh, sensational but what Dublin did do that was very impressive especially in those closing stages in extra time was they didn't panic um, like we did okay we did see the odd shot from Paddy Small and, uh, and we did see some odd kind of uh, uncharacteristic Dublin things but all in all they did remain very composed they kept the ball they just waited for the right opening um, and Dean Rock of course he would want a better man on the pitch in those kind of moments um, and he hit a fantastic point to level it up. You're thinking at that point, could it go? You know, which way would it go at this stage? Um, Dublin had the free in the last minute, obviously. Uh, Dean Rock was brought down, um, I think, by Sean O'Shea. Um, and yeah, I mean, in that kind of moment, I felt like Dean Rock should have. Uh, I mean, I understand why he went for it, of course. I mean, you wouldn't discount Dean Rock. I feel like Dean Rock could hit. 10 of those shots and easily convert six or seven of them. Um, you know, I, I was kind of looking and thinking, why doesn't he just maybe, instead of going for the point, maybe hit it to the, the edge of the square, one of the Dublin players could peel away and have an easier shot. Maybe the only worry would be that the referee would just blow it up straight away. But um, but yeah, huge questioning obviously has to go, go into the referee as well. One thing I actually did mention was Tom O'Sullivan. He had a, a yellow card in this game. Um, and then it was a similar situation. Five to ten minutes later, he brought down um, one of the Dublin players. I think it might have been Con O'Callaghan. Um, yeah, forgive me if I'm wrong there. But certainly in, in that sense, it did look like Tom O'Sullivan clearly brought the player down. And, and for me, that should have been a second yellow. I mean, it should have been a red. Fair enough if you have this persistent fouling thing. But, I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like that should have been a red, in my opinion, a second yellow. Um... But yeah, all in all, a lot of talking points. I'm definitely going to rewatch this game for when I do the preview of the replay. As far as I know, the replay is going to be Saturday week. So really looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, lads, I mean, huge credit has to go to Kerry here for, um, for matching Dublin in almost every way. You know, the second half, they went very man-on-man. -man. They were able to change up their system at times. And yeah, I mean the only worry is that have they missed their opportunity here? They might have, um, they might have missed their opportunity in winning this game because next time around, obviously Dublin, you'd imagine will have 15 players for the entire game, depending on on, on how it pans out. Um, so yeah, guys, um, incredible game. <laughs> I guess the great thing is we will have to do this all over again. But yeah, lads, do let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the game. What did you think of some of the refereeing decisions? What did, what do you think is going to happen now in the replay? Can Kerry actually now go ahead and beat Dublin? They have the confidence now, um, and, and can Dublin respond? Will Dublin, you know, go back to the drawing board? Will they think of a tactical plan to really outmaneuver Kerry in this next game? Dublin, they've been here multiple times before. This game reminded me a lot of the 2017 final against Kerry or against Mayo. Um, and even in some ways in the 2016 
matchup where Dublin eventually won that All Ireland via a replay. So, yeah, lads, of course, do let me know down in the comments below what you thought. My name is Aaron, and I will catch you all next time.